Hi guys, Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service buy, sell, physical precious metals brokerage house. Today we're going to answer the question and I'm going to read it. Can you please explain why declining volume and rising price is evidence of manipulation? And if so, what is the mechanism for this manipulation? Volume, as well, those are the questions that we're going to answer today. So, uh, and remember that if you click on the links below this, you can see all of these images in JPEG form. So we'll get started. Now, first of all, here are some of the tools for market manipulation of the different entities, central bankers, governments, banks, and non-bank corporations. So that's what, oh, they're specific in there. You can look at the JPEG, but basically we're going to take a quick look at all of them, okay? First, we'll take a look at the central bankers, okay? And can you see since the crisis, the crisis hit, they lowered interest rates all the way down, and then they started printing money to flood the system with liquidity. Can you see that? Go on the and see the JPEG, okay? So... The stock market is correlated 93% with central bank money creation because when a central bank first creates money or creates money, the first place that it goes is into the banking system. And then the banks loan it or create leverage on it. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this. So here's how the banks, some of the ways that the banks and non-bank corporations can push the stock markets up through that leverage because this is margin. In other words, borrowing to buy stocks, okay? And you can see that correlation is 97%, okay? Now... Another thing that governments can do is they all have what's called now sovereign wealth funds. This growth has really uh, taken off since 2000 to support the markets. And I don't know, can you see this black bar here that shows you that the Bank of Japan, so the Central Bank of Japan, has, uh, let me read that because I never quite say it right. Uh, it's a top 10 shareholder of about 90% of the Nike stock market index. Now we're going to the volume in just a second. Uh, in fact, we're going there now. So this whole part here was about injecting capital into the system. So now let me go to how can a market go up on declining volume and oh, I love the futures markets which is just an electronic market. This is uh, the CME group. They're, they're just one of them that does this. So I'm just going to focus on one. However, there are a number of exchanges that create these electronic only products that with a very little bit of money, you can control a lot of whatever it is. In fact, I know you've seen it. I'm going to kind of jump a little bit ahead here. But these are... Many, not all, but many of the products, electronic products used to control uh, agriculture, foreign exchange, so currencies, uh, equities, bonds, euro dollars, which is also currencies, treasuries, okay, uh, so bonds, and then, of course, we've talked mostly in these about how they control the physical metals markets. So can you see that long list? And can you see the price ranges? This column here, and you'll be able to see it better in the JPEG, but that column there is what it costs banks to control these contracts. This column here is what control is controlled by central banks or anybody you know, associated with the central banks, not just the central banks. They have their groups that they work with. So, all right, we're going to look at, just to get uh, specific, and because they happen to mention, mention it in their literature, so we're going to look at the S&P 500. And what they're talking about here is, is basically an example 
where by futures on margin, taking advantage of the 10 to 1 leverage ratio, 10 to 1. So for $20,000 roughly, you can control or banks can control $200,000 worth of stock. Okay, you got that? Remember, for gold, it's $1.10 controls 100 ounces. So the E-mini futures, each contract is a little complicated, equates to $52. But those E-mini equity index futures cost banks $1.18 per contract and central banks and their minions 76 cents. And that gets you a 10 to 1 leverage ratio. And you could do it on margin, so you could actually even lever it up even more. So, this is one of those E-mini future contracts, and this happens to reflect primarily December 16th, so just like a month-ish ago. Can you see this big spike in volume here, which then pushed the stock market higher? So if you're a central banker, it's 76 cents per contract. If you are a regular bank, what did I say? That is $1.18 per contract. So it's that leverage, and here's the result. And I'm going to show you long term. So here's where the crisis hit in 2008. Top chart. Uh, well, uh, no, I want them to see the whole chart. Me, I'll give them this so they can get both here. Okay. And you can see that there was a decline in volume of 71% since 2009, and the stock market went up. This is the S&P 500. Now, lest you think that they're maybe not doing that anymore, this is it for the last year. Okay? But the way that they do that, I mean, I just want you to think about this logically for a minute. In a normal free market environment, prices go up when demand exceeds supply. And prices go down when, wait, demand, yeah, when supply exceeds demand. But we've seen how demand has been growing in spot gold, and you've seen enough of those charts to see that the, the spot price is declining, and it's because of those futures contracts. And here, too, this indicates a decline in demand, but yet the price is going up, and it really is all about derivatives. You and I don't get to do that. It's the big boys that get to do that. So I hope that answered your question on how is it possible for a market to rise on declining volume. And if there was a lot of trading going on, let's say in the electronic world, high frequency trading and all of that, that would be reflected in the volume, right? So understand that you've got a 71% decline in volume in the S&P, and the, all of the markets reflect that. So I could show you any of them. It doesn't matter, okay? But the way that they do that is through leverage, whether it's money for free, margining that out, or leveraging that out, putting it into, I mean, there's so many different ways, putting it into contracts. It's all digital. And I would like to just point this out on this. What does it say? Electronic trading only. Okay? If everything goes digital, that's really easy for, that's a button push, almost no cost. So, I hope that made some sense to you today. Keep those questions coming and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, I'll be selecting different questions just like I did with this to answer every Friday. So please be patient with me because I am getting, it's wonderful, but I'm getting a lot of questions. So we're kind of trying to organize them to address what most people are asking. But I promise I will address them all. Follow us on Facebook to get notifications when we're doing these live events. And look below and there's the link 
for JPEGs on all of these images and more. And don't forget, we're just a phone call away. 888-696-4653. We are all here to be of service. So have a safe weekend. Bye-bye, guys.